and welcome back to Bourbon Barrel Talk. I'm your host, Scott Minton. Today, we're back in the Brock Bourbon Bar. We got we got just the Brocks, and then we brought Tim along with us. I'm like, yes. I forgot about the last name. Your last name. I, I didn't get the last name fully out, so nobody really knows. I'll tell you guys why afterwards. So, But anyway, so we've got three fantastic bottles to try today. We're going to review them off. We've got the Michter's Toasted Sour Mash, which just was released. That's the 2022 we got a William or the old William Tar 12 year inheritance bottle. And then we have the bottle your own Bernheim original whiskey from Heaven Hill. So we're going to do the Michter's toasted sour mash first. So, Nick, you've got that bottle. What do we got on our hands, brother? So it is coming in at 86 proof. Um, it seems really light considering a lot of the other Michter's releases, but I think a lot of the Michter's, though, do come in somewhere right around, you know, mid 80s, low 90s. So I think that's about on par. But so, you know, they have a lower entry proof, which most people don't know that about Michter's, but they, they their entry proof in the barrel is typically somewhere between 101 and 109. So they do a lower entry proof. They actually water theirs down before they put them in the barrel. Really? I did not know that. Interesting. Yeah. So, and they think that that is what makes their bourbon a little bit more special or unique than most of the other bourbons that are out there. So, so what does this go for a bottle? Uh, uh, I don't 109? Know, well, I think it's about there, but it's about 109, 110, somewhere around there, maybe 120. Um, secondary goes beyond, but uh, this was sold today in a combo pack with the actual regular sour mash. It was for about one. 175. I've, I've just, it, and I, this is the only Mictor's product that I think I've probably ever tried that I've never been a huge fan of. So I'm, I'm kind of anxious to try this one, even though I, I've been, it's not been one of my favorites. So I, the nose right off the bat, a little floral, a little rye. It's got just a punch of like, I'm going to call it more of a toffee than a caramel. It's got a little tobacco. I get a little bit of graham cracker right there at the end. But I don't know if that might be just a couple of mixes. I could see like maybe some honey. Yeah, like that 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 honey that comes off that graham cracker. Is that what you're talking about? Or are you talking yeah. about okay? Like you open just a fresh bag of graham crackers and you take that first whiff of like that yeah. honeycomb. Yeah, I, I pick it. I'm I'm picking up what you're saying. All right, I'm gonna take it and take a drink. Barbara, what, what do you got on the nose while I'm drinking? I'm still trying to figure it out. It smells good though. It's a whole lot of goodness. Now the interesting thing on the mash bill is is that it does say that it's. Nothing because it is a whiskey, it's not a right. bourbon. Yep. So with that, it says nothing is over fifty percent certain grain. So there's a mixture of it that's all below fifty percent. Huh. So I wonder if it's a four grain or if it's just a if it's a traditional three grain whiskey. I will tell you that just the taste right off the bat, dude. Sweet. It's smooth. It's subtle. It's very very flavor forward. The rye actually d- doesn't come extremely forward at all. Man, I, I I will say I'm enjoying this one a lot better than I did the last one I tried. Okay, on the nose, I like to be unique. Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids? Yeah. You get that much, that much like, like citrusly fruity on that? I, in like the middle. So on the very front, it's very sour to me. So like that kind of really, really sour. Yeah, I mean, I get the bitterness. And then I get yeah. a little bit of that, that f- kind of fruity in the middle. And then kind of like a combo of the both on the back I'm just not getting that much fruit i'm getting more like a like a bread dough like a like a sour like like the old amish bread mm-hmm. right you, you getting that tim like the old amish bread like the, amish the, the, sourdough like, yeah like the, the the pasture bread like the, maybe it's this maybe it's a sourdough that i'm getting yeah that's what i'm kind of getting has a little bit of sweetness to it yeah it's got and some then, sweetness maybe and then like when i taste this i think of october we're getting ready to go into October. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I Yeah, the, this, surprisingly, I've been drinking a few uh, Oktoberfest beers recently, and then we just had like an Oktoberfest over at the German American Club, and this is, you know, feeling like that nice fall, winter flavors and smells. Yeah, I will say, man, I've, I, I'm enjoying this much more than the, the 2019 um, Sour Mash that they had. I'm going to throw, throw a drop or two in this one and see what it does to it. Now the interesting thing is I do get the I don't get the toast until I'm like like in the kind of like the back and sides yeah, of the mouth. It's mid to back, yep. Yeah. For sure. It's on the finish. You get that toasting and you get like a like what I would call like a gra- like almost like a s'mores. Mm-hmm. Like a little bit of marshmallow, a little bit of like that, that caramel from or the, the, the honey from the graham cracker. Yeah, you're just missing that little chocolate element. Yeah. But yeah. yeah I don't get any chocolate, but that, but that's you yeah. get all the other elements of that in there. Mm-hmm. I really, the only thing I feel like it's missing, and, and I don't know that it's missing it, but like the, like you're getting a fruit, but like I want it to have a citrus pop and I'm not getting a citrus pop out of it. I don't get a citrus. 
I get like a fruit. Now I cannot place what fruit I got. Now I've just added a couple of drops of water. So now I'm interested to see the differences. Now for yeah. me, what I'm missing, I, I feel like I'm missing is you get us like that hint of marshmallow. I'd rather it be a little bit more potent, like a little bit more because of that toasted aspect of it. You want that to be a little bit heavier. Yeah. No, I would agree. The, the, the toasted bourbon is like the toasted bourbon dude is like straight marshmallow. I mean, it's got all kinds of craziness to it. Oh, Barbara's got the, she's got the stink eye going over her, man. She's, she's, she's leather. The wheels are turning. Yeah. I get a little leather after you add the water. Yep. Oh yeah. Heavy, heavy, that, that chew on leather. Mm-hmm. Yep. That old baseball glove leather. I'm not getting leather, but I am getting, um, Lord almighty. My brain just went away. Baseball glove lover. I like that. I mean, that's, perfect. I mean, dude, I mean, yeah, I mean like the, any, oh man, even on the front palette, like the, you get that little bit of that baseball glove leather, like that, you, you know, when you chew on the outside of your glove when you were and a kid. It has the lanolin that yep. you put on there yep. and you mix those two smells together. Yeah. Uh, that's breaking in your ball glove. Right yeah. There. Breaking in your ball glove for sure. Yeah. That's like the boys of summer man mm-hmm. i'm getting the and it kind of helped me out because for the love of god i'm couldn't remember anything um the pumpernickel and like the rye bread that goes on a reuben gotcha okay yeah and i haven't even tasted it that's just the nose that i'm getting that yeah and that's I, with I the could, water I could, I could, I yeah. could also say that you get maybe a little bit of the nuttiness that comes with those be- with those pumpernickel breads. Like you know how you, they they usually yeah. have a little nuts or something on the yeah, outside something. edge. Yeah, something. Right. Exactly. So this is interesting because I get like that rye bread flavor. But right. I don't get the rye spice because I'm not getting a heavy spice no, flavor. No, the spice out of actually it. dies when yeah, you put the, the spice, water on, it, which but is the unusual. Rye flavor. I agree. Yep. Which I think is where that bread kind of is because it's still got a little bit of like that doughy type sweet into it, and I think that's where that bread idea is coming into my brain. Now I'm going to actually taste it after the water. Go ahead, taste it. Now I'm not. Now the toast aspect seems to have fallen off just a little bit. Maybe like it could be a toasted rye, mm-hmm. like rye bread, but it's not really going far in the toasted. You lose a little bit of that off the water. I'm gonna. I can't wait to come back and smell this one again. But uh, but I'm, I'm gonna let it sit and empty for for a hot minute, and I'm gonna go on to this uh the William Tar the twelve year inheritance bottle. Okay, so. Really quick. Yep. On the taste afterwards, I'm actually getting a very charred marshmallow. A charred marshmallow? Yeah. Mm. How much water did you put into it? Just like one? Two. Two? Mm. Tiny two. Well, she's got a bigger pour than we do. Very true. She's very, she's very a, true. she's a heavier pour, so she uh, might have a little bit more of the flavorings. In- all I can say is very the- well worth it. Yeah, she's saying on the mid palate, if I remember correctly. Very, very good pour. Yeah, no. I, like I said, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised because the, the the first couple of times that uh, that <laughs> so so Man, if, we have a mime over here. You know, so we're, <laughs> we're playing charades over here with John. So if Victorus <laughs> wants to give me a bottle, I will drink it. Yeah. <laughs> However, John two words and I, sounds like <laughs> as soon as he tasted it, he got it as well. Yeah, uh, like a heavy char marshmallow, huh? Hmm. All right, so this William Tar Tim, Tim, you are the tar expert of all the people that I know because you've been to Lexington a handful of times. And what, what do we got on this bad boy? So this is a very interesting brand. Um, uh, William Tar was one of the first distillers, uh, I think, the first distillery in the Lexington area, which yeah, is no. a big thing. Yep. Um, obviously, during Prohibition, he went away like everybody else did, um, except for the big four. And then uh, uh, a group of businessmen and, believe it or not, Coach Stoops from University of Kentucky uh, got in on this. And they found an old bottle and they kind of redid it, figured out what was in the bottle, and uh, they they, uh, distilled it uh, and then uh, barreled it. And then here we have. So this is a 12-year-old bottle. Comes in at, what, 122.8, if I remember correctly? Yes. Okay. And on the 12-year... Um, 120 proof plus, uh, notes of cloves, nutmeg, subtle hints of cinnamon, light mint, and toasted pecans. Okay. I'm going to see if I get any of those things. The nose, I don't, I, I, I get a little bit of the mint and, and a, maybe a little bit of the clove, but I'm coming off like a different tobacco. Yeah. I get a slight tobacco, but I get like a heavy, like the dark brown sugar, heavy molasses brown sugar. That's yeah. what it is. The dark brown sugar. It's it's weird. I'm. It's almost like a rum nose. 
It's got a little bit of that rum, mm-hmm. like heavy, like that the agrigal rum with that heavy molasses. Yeah, I, like I, I sugar cane. Yeah, the dark sugar cane. So another interesting fact about the the distillery right is uh, tar is going to get away from their bottle and their label that they normally have right here with uh, Mr. Tar on the label. And and that's not actually a picture of Mr. Tar, but it's someone that they put on the label. It is okay. And uh, they're rebranding as RD1. Uh, very good distillery. Uh, they have a 96 proof, a 104, uh, I think it's a 112. Okay. And then they have, uh, they'll continue under the RD1 with this 120 plus proof. Gotcha. So the nose on this thing, it, it's definitely interesting. And I'm surprised you're as big a fan as this as you are because you, you're more of a weeder typically. But it, but we, we talked about this on the way over here today was the fact that you evidently either like really high rye or a weeded bourbon, which most people aren't that way. Yes, I'm a little bit psycho when it comes to bourbon. I go one way or the other way. Psycho Tim. <laughs> psycho Tim. I'm an equal opportunity. That's me. I, I am very equal opportunity. Um, you know, and we're going to finish off with straight wheat. So I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see how this one, like, holds up against that one. Because the wheat, I got to imagine, is going to be super, super sweet in comparison to this. Because this nose is spicy. It's rich. Like I said, it's got a little bit of that tobacco and some other notes. I get a little bit of caramel. I get the molasses, that that that, that yeah. deepness. So the, the, the legs on this thing is crazy. So the other history behind RD1 is uh, they have just broke ground in Owensboro, Kentucky. Uh, they are a new distillery. Uh, they will actually do everything from start to finish uh, on the the bourbon for their brand on RD1. And it's a very good, um, I think, very, very Kentucky bourbon. So do you, do you know if this was sourced or where it was sourced from? Because to me, this is, uh, it's very super reminiscent. <laughs> so the marketing <laughs> guy wouldn't tell me where it was sourced, but the only thing I can tell is it's either barreled in uh, Bardstown or uh, Harrodsburg. You know, I, I'm almost betting that this is probably a Heaven Hill product. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, yeah. I mean, it's not Will It. Um, mm-hmm. No, 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 no. It's not, not Willet. Willet. Dude, Willet has some crazy stuff, so you, you never really know what you're going to hit when you get Willet. But, uh, man, it's it just the, the the rye on this thing, it's really, really rye for it, but it, there's, there's also a ton of corn. I mean, it's got a lot, a lot of corniness to it. And and smooth. It is. It's it's very smooth. The front palate's got some punch. But yes. The, the mid and the, and the finish is very smooth. I'm That's, getting a little tiny bit of mint. Yes. A little bit of mint, yeah. A little bit of mint. That's yep. thing, yep. Yeah, I get a, I get a little mint. It's but I it's, try not to listen to all of those. It's not the it's not the weird mint though, like that that Mm-mm. that heavy like like granular mint. Yeah, no, no. It, this is more like a spearmint, like that double mint gum, that sweeter mint. I think. Mm, it's that I don't even that, think it's that strong. No, I'm, I'm but I'm just saying it's more in the sweet mint family yeah. than the than the bitter mint yes, family. When you're running through a Kentucky field, yep. you get that hint of mint. Yeah, that's what it is. Yep, yep. No, I, I get what I'm picking up what you're putting down. I just. We can hear you whispering, fellas. <laughs> I'm getting a, you know, kind of like the mid to back palate. I'm getting a little bit of a creaminess. I'm trying to really pinpoint it. It's not like it's, it's not like that drying oak that you would get for a lot of the aged bourbons. Yeah. It's, but it's, it's, there's something that's just lingering there that I just can't put my finger on quite yet. That creaminess that you're thinking of. And, and, and it's funny that you said that. Cause like at the end, I was sitting there thinking on the, like that mid to end finish. It's almost like a, almost like a custard, but not like, but it's a sweeter custard. It's not, but it, but it, it you're right. It's something weird. It's in, it's in between like what you would think of a traditional custard and like a flan, like that, like that, where they char the, the flan, like the. Like a creme brulee. Like a creme brulee type but thing. But it doesn't have like that But if you ever notice, flan yeah. is not as yeah, sweet, yeah. Right. right? It doesn't have the right. sugar. It doesn't have the cinnamon especially, yes. Exactly. But, but yeah. That with the pecans. Yeah. I could see that, yeah. And yeah. it just ties it's, it, it's definitely got some complexity to it. Mm-hmm. I don't, definitely. I, I, don't, I don't mind it. What's the price point on these bad boys? Uh, 180. 180. <laughs> there's only about 100 left. 100 left, okay. Of the uh, old William Tarr bottles because they'll be switching to RD1. Okay. Gotcha. That's a strong price. Oh, I got a little water. What's the water doing to the nose? Oh, it's just all rye. Is it killing it? It, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's is killing. pretty heavy rye, but I'm not 100% sure I'm not getting some sort of stone fruit. It's got kind of a little bit of that little teeny tiny little sweet. 
stone fruit, maybe an apricot. I mean, it's yeah. it's so faint though. It's so faint. It's like a. It's not a oh, peach. Really it's not good. a plum. Like a raw yes. ap- apricot. Yeah. So it's weird. That's still very kind of sour almost, but it's still got yeah. just t- almost like a punch. young one, like one yes. that's not quite ripe. Did you get yeah. a little pear. Uh, that's I could, what I was I, getting. I, 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 I think it, yeah. I was thinking it was getting. I could, it got I could get a little pear. All of a sudden, when I put the water in there. Yeah. yeah. The, now the, I haven't tasted it yet. This is all 100 percent nose. The, the with the water, I was. That's what. Thanks for mentioning that because that was about what I was thinking yeah. about. Like uh, what I was getting from a pear brandy, but it's more or less just kind of lighter. Yeah, it is very pear brandy. Like you mm. said, yeah, it's kind of boozy because the rye really pops through, but you get a little bit of that pear and a little bit of it. Yep, Christmas. Yeah. Man, but the rye really, oh my God, it just explodes on the front palate. Yeah. I'm getting a lot on the sides of the tongue and the mouth. Just yeah. that ra- like rye spice linger. All right. William Tarr. All right. Cloves and black pepper on the taste after the yeah, water. Yeah, black pepper I get. Maybe a little mm. nutmeg. A little rye. Um, no? I really don't get nutmeg. Now, I don't, but. Everybody's different. I mean, that's the, that's exactly. the beauty of bourbon. Well, you know? and this has always been, I'm a broken record on this one, but to each their own. Right. Third sip, I was getting kind of like a, that black pepper mm-hmm. right at the end, like back of the tongue. Yeah, right. Like almost mid to back. Yeah, it's a lot of black pepper. It's got some, that rye spices. Is, is, is it, it, it's crushing that whole experience on the on the water. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't mind this with like a single rock. You know, just you know, normal over time. Then as that's kind of diluted in, and then at the end, you kind of get to enjoy that black pepper with it. Dude, this Bernheim is sweet on the nose. It is super sweet. What's the what's the mash bill on these Bernheims? Are these are, are they like ninety percent wheat or like seventy percent wheat? Do we know? Hold on, I got to get my smell right. Oh God! <laughs> get, getting those pits. That's what Jared okay. does. He smells his own armpits. My my eyeballs just cannot read that little bitty writing. Now, where is Bernheim from? Is so that Bernheim a, is a Heaven Hill product. Heaven Hill. Yep. So, Bardstown. Mm-hmm. Bardstown, yeah. So, this one is 125.2 proof. So, it's coming in hot. It's coming in pretty hot. So, it's 51% wheat. Aged seven years. 49% malted barley, or has it got a different mash bill? I would assume it'd be the same mash bill, but the mash bill right now that I have listed is 51% wheat, 37% corn, 12, 12% uh, Damn, malted it's, barley. it's wheat and high corn mm-hmm. porn. you got to be kidding me. Huh? Did you, I hope you Ooh. said corn. I did. I said. I, I said. I, 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 actually, I, I said both. I said both. I said hot corn porn. I, I said both. Um, but it's weird because I don't get that much corn. Like I mean, for it being fifty-one, thirty-something percent corn, I don't get that much corn on the nose. So I know in a previous podcast, Nick said something about like a corn pudding. I am really strong on that on my nose you're getting that on the nose i am i got just a hint of a little bit of sweet but that really heavy corn no i'm I'm thinking of uh more like just like you uh rip open a husk of sweet corn and that that, that's what you you kind of get man maybe 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 a mine's messed up let me go back in here and get get a fresh sniff on my arm here now now would you all say this is a traditional kentucky uh, bourbon well, it's weeded it's whiskey. A, no, it's I, a whiskey. Oh, I'm it's sorry. 100% it's 100% a whiskey. whiskey. It's a weeded whiskey. Yeah, it's 51% wheat. Yeah, so, so it's not a bourbon because it's it not 51% be, corn. Exactly. Seven so. years. You yeah. said 125.2? Correct. All right. I'm trying to make sure my memory's staying with me here. The nose is solid on that bad boy. So, uh-oh, John. John's coming in. He's coming in hot. You never know what I'm going to say. No, we, uh, a couple weeks ago for Jared's uh, bachelor party, we went down to Bartstown Brewing and to Heaven Hill. We did have a little experience, and of the six guys that went five bought bottles, four of us did the Bernheim. Right. And of course, Jared had to be the loser and get the the Lars or right. the Elijah Craig. But well, Elijah Craig. But there was a reason why this this was just a fantastic barrel proof. Right. All right. So I, I tried this just because you couldn't get the uh, Heaven Hill Select. <laughs> <laughs> So it, it, it's got that very like wheat flavored forward, um, that that sweetness and that 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 nice nose, and then the taste is like wheat on the front, kind of spicy in the mid palate, like I, a nine grain wheat bread. Yeah, I could see where you're where, what you're picking because up there. there's so many different yeah kind of wheats that you're catching. Yeah, when I think of it, I'm thinking like like you said, right? One of those wheat breads that have like a ton of different grains that are stuck to it. Yeah, the whole, the whole grain. Yeah, the whole grain that's got like 20 grains or something crazy in it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. 
Yeah. Yeah, you're saying nine. I'm 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 exaggerating a little bit. <laughs> I might be coming back to also the uh, oh, what was that place called that Pam used to work at? Uh, Great Harvest Break Company. Yeah, Great Harvest. Yep. Great I'll tell Harvest. you, dude. If you've not had it, if, if Dave's. Dave's bread and Dave's bagels. So this guy, like he he hires like ex criminals and stuff like that, trying to give them jobs to get back into the workforce and stuff like that. Which I'm, I'm all about anybody trying to help people, you know, reacclimate themselves to society and stuff like that. Absolutely. But, but I'm gonna tell you what, dude. Like they make the absolute best bread I've I've had in forever that you can buy on the shelf. Now it's super expensive, but it's high protein too, which is kind of cool. So like and, the protein's and, like eight or ten grams and, for a slice, and that's good. And let's give a shout out to Blue Dog Bakery. Oh, Blue Dog, yeah, yes, that's very good too in Louisville. Yeah, uh, when you drop a little water into this whiskey, uh, totally changed the taste taste for me. I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, the funny thing is, it's not like it's not. It's not like it's not Weller. It's not one of those, you know, high, the the bourbons that are high weed. This is truly a weeded whiskey, so therefore it's it's definitely a little different. It's got some sweetness, some subtleness. I'm kind of curious what water will do to this thing, but it makes it a lot better. It's got a lot. It's got a lot. A lot. A I whole thought you liked weeded bourbon. So he likes weeded bourbon. So oh, bourbons. Oh, but not so this being a weeded whiskey. That's whiskey. what. That's what I'm saying. And t- Tim's not incorrect. He might be a little psycho. Or maybe manic um, in some capacity. <laughs> Teach with that their stuff. own. That's little, what I'm saying. But everybody's different, right? I mean, that's the thing. water makes it, I don't know if it cuts it. It, it probably does cut it. it. I mean, that would be my guess. But it takes I get a the, lot more tobacco in it. Yes. Yeah. I, and I okay. do like that taste. Yeah. That's still just the nose. I haven't little even tasted tobacco. it again. Yeah, I have a lot, lot left, but I added like two to three drops, and it feels more complex just with a couple extra drops in it. I'm shaking my head, yes. <laughs> I'm enjoying it more with a couple so drops the, the, into it. The nose dies a little bit, but I will say it's bringing forward a little bit more of those fruit notes. Like, right. Yeah, so the, the, so that weeded, like, that grainy bread that you were talking about, that doughiness that kind of yeah. comes through, it that's kind of mild out, but I'm getting a little bit more of a fruit, but I can't put my, I cannot put my, my finger on exactly what kind of, like, fruit that is. It's a darker fruit, like mm-hmm. almost like a plum or like a, a yeah, fig I think it's a or plum, something like that. Plum or fig, like how about a date? It could be a date. It could be. Mm-hmm. Dates are typically a little sweeter though, yeah, and have a and have a little sweeter. bit of bite. I want to say more like a fig, yeah, because it's that little bit more of that kind of tartish. And it might be because I had some recently. It almost reminds me a little bit of like persimmon bread. How about raisiny? Um, yeah, I could get some raisin. Because raisin, yeah, I can get raisin. Yeah. So raisin, date, all those things kind of oh, all right for the same. I don't think plum. date. I think dates are no, just I, too I, sweet. I'm saying it's all in the same family. But my point right. is, is like all those things: plums, raisins, yeah, dates. Yeah, I think it's definitely all those things are kind of different, and they're all in the same family, but they all have different notes that go along with that. And I'm I'm illiterate because I don't know what a fig tastes like. <laughs> You really don't know what a fig? You never had no. like figgy pudding when you were a kid or anything? No, I forgot. Sir. Tim's fancy. He's from Chicago. Now I never had he, figgy pudding, but I've had figs. He, <laughs> he fancy. Um, man, I'll tell you, this is but definitely raisin-y. unique. Raisin-y. It is. I, I could definitely see where some raisin comes through on that for sure. I'm almost like, and almost like some raisin bread, like some cinnamon, like yeah. Now, I, now, weirdly enough, I get a little spice somewhere. Yeah. That's well, I think that's where it. that's coming from, that cinnamon raisin bread. Mm-hmm. Which is weird because there is no rye. I understand, but that's... <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. It no, doesn't no, necessarily no. mean that there's no rye or anything, right. but I think it's just the combination The funny thing is I get no malt. Thing. No. No, no. no. Like, Zero. I'm, I'm shocked that there's even malt in this. And well, even considering we're talking about bread yeah. and not really getting that malt. malty... Yeah. Right. I don't know, but you're right. It's it's almost funny. Like the 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 front palate on it after you add a little water almost has a almost like a rye taste in some capacity. Yeah. What, what kind of barrels do they use? I, I would assume they're probably just new charred oak, but they could be. I mean, with a me and whiskey, they might they are new charred oak, so they're new charred American oak. So number four char. Okay, so it's a heavier mm-hmm. char. So, so that's where that might be where some of the that's where some of that spice yeah. is coming into play. Well, definitely sweetness for sure too. Definitely, yeah. Maybe if it's both. maybe if we're just mis mistaking the rye as possibly some sp- like spiced oak or seasoned oak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, could be. Yeah, hundred percent. I don't know. It, a lot it, better it, with the water drops. I I, I disagree. Well, I, 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 I'm a neat on this one. I'm with you, Scott. I'm a neat. I, I, I like this. The, I, I prefer the smell with water. Agreed. I prefer the nose Absolutely. with water, but yeah, I the prefer water, the taste with neat. Yeah, that nose really is a little bit more complex with that water. Um, but I 
I completely agree. I think meat on the the flavor on the taste is exactly what needs to happen. Revisit time. Yeah, revisit on the nose. Oh, oh that tar is really nice. Yeah. I was about to say the tar is really, really. I mean the the tobacco and the leather and the hold on just, just man it's it's okay, super I haven't sweet even gotten to the tar i think i just did the sour you did the sour that, mash the sour yeah. mash has got a great nose too don't get me wrong oh, going back does. to it I after the fact so much tobacco the tar though is a, the, the tar man going back to that thing on the glows that that's one of those this is one of those oh. that you could literally go back and just sniff on for the night after you drink out of it oh. yeah it's it's traditional kentucky yeah, it's, it's, a, it's got a that's bunch. That's what it smells like when you drive the interstate and you see it's the like hanging. coal yeah. almost. Yeah. It's like going it's through the yeah. coal mine. Char area. and yeah, tobacco just, and yeah, all I mean, those things. It, it, I get so much different things that have absolutely nothing to do with bourbons or whiskeys. That tar, like that hot tar where they do on the road or where they're um, coal mining, where they're pulling the it out. Yeah, the soot, the soot. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's I'm getting so much of that, like that e- Western Ken- or Eastern Kentucky, mm-hmm. yes, hot area. For sure, you for mix sure. that with hanging um, tobacco, tobacco, yeah, in yeah. a and farm. It's perfect, and it's it's Kentucky. And Absolutely, this agreed. is coming from a Georgia fan. That's right, <laughs> oh. an Illinois boy, Georgian fan. <laughs> All right, have y'all gone back and? sniffed the Bernheim after everything else. I get I get the tobacco heavy mm-hmm. on that one. Absolutely. It's like we're smoking and we're sniffing. <laughs> I, mm, I don't necessarily say sniffing, but smoking. It's almost like a but so kind that, of that, a little that, bit That's harder. tobacco, but, but yeah, so, so... It's more like a cigar tobacco. Yeah, it's like a cigar tobacco. Yeah. I'm going to say even like a, a like one of those uh, weird like uh, fruity tobacco ones, like acids yeah. or like yeah. Swiss or Sweets yeah, yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, there yeah, you yeah. go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for sure. I don't know, man. So All we right. can roll a blunt with this. What the <laughs> heck? Probably, probably definitely could. Any could, idea what's going on over there? N- no. Okay. You can't take those boys anywhere. <laughs> well, duh. <laughs> All right. So we got three pours. The mm. den is out of control. We we, we got we we got to rank them. Okay. We we, we got to do it. So uh, with or without water. Well, I'm gonna do Let's, mine just neat because I preferred all, right. all of them. Neat. Let's do it both ways. You want to okay. do it both ways? Hey, all right. You and I can do both ways. I've always right, done do, it both you ways. You do it both Man. ways. All right. <laughs> she, she, God, goes, she goes both ways. Man, Nick. I'm Salisbury Key Club. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. All right. All right. Scott, you uh, must always go first. So you want go me to go first? Go first. Yeah. I don't have to go first. I'll let you go first. I uh, know. I want you to go first. Let me go first. All right. So I, I'm going to go first. Let me see. Man, this is actually really hard. This, this is one, one of the is hard, hard. This is one of the harder ones I've done. I'm going to go Michter's Toasted, Tar, Bernheim. Okay. One, two, three. That's okay. neat. Okay. If I'm going to go with water, mm-hmm. I'm going to take Tar, Michter's, Bernheim. Okay. All righty. No, you first. Let so the ladies I'm, go last. So I'm easy. Uh, on both, tar is first. Okay. Neat, Michter's toasted is second, and Bernheim is third. Okay. With water, I switch those two. Okay. Gotcha, so I gotcha, go gotcha. Bernheim, then, and, then Michter's. All okay. right. Nicholas. Neat. I actually enjoyed tar as one, neat. Um, Michter's two, Bernheim three. With water, I go Bernheim one, Tar two, Michter's three. Man, we are nowhere near each other. This is crazy. This might be the first time. What do you got, Barbara? So, and that's the great thing about this kind of stuff is there's always so many different palettes and different everything. So, neat for me, I would have to go Tar, Bernheim, and then the Michter's. Okay. All right. Now, with water, I'm going to go Bernheim Tar and then Mictors. Man, that's crazy. I think we were just all over the place, but but that's what makes bourbon great to me. I mean, that's what I tell people bourbon and whiskey. We were the same. You were the same. Yeah, we were the same. Okay, so you two were the same. Ironically enough, yeah. That's funny. Usually, I am the uh, oddball of the. You are definitely uh, usually the oddball. So, but but what do you think about smell? Because Mm -hmm. I'm kind of I'm conflicted on smell between the. the tar and the uh, All right, bourbon. after we've the, drunk the, them all? The, the tar easily has the best nose at yeah. the end. Uh, I, I'm I'd say the linger, it. yes. Tar tar wins on the lingering smell, mm-hmm. you know, that is... They both smell so, Kentucky. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, I, because tar adds the coal to it. I think tar has a little bit more of that Kentucky smell. It also has a little bit... 
in terms of the smell, you get a little bit of that bluegrass, that grassy feel, field, tar area. Yeah, I, I'm gonna go part tar on the nose. If you're gonna so do the nose, I'm nose, gonna go tar. I have to go 100 percent tar. Yeah, tar. And, and then I'm gonna go Bernheim and then the Michters. Oh no, no, I'm 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 I'm, I'm tar Michters Bernheim. All right, but Bernheim, I'm not a big weeder on the nose, okay. people. Like for me, wheat just doesn't typically. It's typically super super sweet. Okay, and you don't get a whole lot more with it. Okay, this one had some at least some doughiness. Yeah, this bread. one had a think, whole had, lot it of had a different. Lot of, a lot of things going on. But and I think when I did the you do bourbon, but it doesn't hold I, up with that rye that's in those other things that's just my opinion but to each their own that's right nick what do you what about you on the nose um me for nose is going to be tar um victors and then bernheim gotcha all right all right well that's our episode of bourbon barrel talk if you want to find us you can find us on facebook instagram and the twitters you can email us at bourbon barrel talk at gmail.com make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get these episodes as soon as they are dropped on sunday mornings this is scott barbara Nick and Tim signing out. Peace, Peace out. out. Peace out. Peace.